It's time to uh, now to know what's on the front pages of Nigerian newspapers. And we have here, right here in the studio, public affairs analyst Shijibumi Adebi Benef, as well as a political technocrat Dr. Dayo Kayade, joining us at this point. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. So we have several newspapers this morning. We have the Vanguard, This Day Punch, News Direct, National Economy, The Nation, Newspaper, Leadership, Guardian, Daily Trust, Daily Times, Daily Sun, and Business Day. So we'll start with the Vanguard newspaper. And it's saying here, 2023, Northern Elders back press Igbo presidency. That's what's on the rider in uh, the big headlines in the Vanguard newspaper. It says here, Task APC PDP to zone tickets to Southeast. Appeal to all other interested zones to support Southeast. Thank Igbo elites and leaders for denouncing Namde Kano's plot to destabilize Nigeria. This day says 1,247 petitions filed on alleged pol police brutality in 30 states and uh, the FCT. Kano 5 others failed to set up judicial panels. The punch says cut uh, Buhari's regime's second recession, cut governance cost. Aid production, diversify, experts tell federal government. The news direct says, yeah, 65% LDR, banks hike provision for bad loans, NPL ratio to increase in 2020, as according to analysts, that's in the news direct this morning. Moving now to the national economy, currency speculators will lose money, bro to change operators. They say CBN has enough forex to fund markets and defend the Naira. The Nation newspaper is saying experts' recession to hit major sectors of the economy, poverty, food prices, unemployment may worsen. What to do to exit slowdown? Leadership says manufacturers decry uh, federal government's plan to slash duties on imported vehicles say policy will undermine local production, lead to job losses, urge National Assembly to halt execute executive bill before implementation of the AFCTA in January 2021. The Guardian says, wobbly choices for CBN on recession. And that's the bold header in The Guardian. The Daily Trust is saying Nasarawa APC chair assassinated Zamfara Imam, 30 others still in captivity. The Daily Times says Nigeria can shorten her worst recession in 33 years. The Daily Sun says recession scores to lose jobs. Uh, NECA, LCCI, Abakoba, Ohabuwa, other tackle government who could have avoided this if government had heeded the council, said Atiku. Airlines to review fares upwards. Business Day here is saying that life was already tough for Nigerians and then came recession. That's the business day this morning. So we will stick with and some newspapers who are talking about the recession and the punch especially says uh, Buhari's regime's second recession cut governance costs, aid production, diversify, experts tell federal government. The writer here in the, day, in the punch newspaper is saying government policy emphasizes revenue sharing, not production. Who tell me others tell government. The Daily Sun says recession scores to lose jobs and we go on and on here with the newspapers who are talking about the recession. Uh, experts are saying in the nation, uh, experts are saying recession to hit major sectors of the economy. Gentlemen, Nigeria is getting into its worst recession in 33 years. How does this come to you? <clears throat> you see, recession is nothing other than when you have series of indices pointing towards economic destabilization. Okay. That's just in a simple form. That is to say that in the last few years, say in the last five, six years, where Nigeria has been witnessing series of job losses, series of increment in prices of commodities mm. to the extent that even people keep on kept on complaining that purchase their purchasing power mm. their real income their real income is decreasing in not in an arithmetic way now in a geometric way 
All right? Mm -hmm. So that we are out of recession when somebody says we are out. No. Nigeria has been in a perpetual state of recession in the last six years. We are just getting out of COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. Other climbs have been given their citizens, their, their industrialists, their manufacturers, palliatives to get out of this. But what are we seeing here? Skyrocketing prices. You also see, we are always talking about sharing formula all of the time. Nobody is talking about production formula. So when you are eating your cake, all the, when you are using your two hands to eat your cake, I'm without so planning how to bake another cake to replace that cake, what would you expect? Nothing other than recession. So not until when we, there was a time that they, they, they came up with some uh, economic team of which... Uh, Headed by the vice president, yeah? No, 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 no. The one with uh, Professor, Riwani... Professor okay. Salami. Professor Riwani, Salami. Professor Salami and all that. And our own particular problem, someone was asking me, yes, with this kind of a people, with this set of people, there is no doubt about it, the economy of Nigeria will now go up and... I said, you are making a big mistake. That you are, you are putting up such vibrant and, uh, and uh, capacious team doesn't mean that our economy will improve. So what it depends. It depends on the philosophy of the person giving those people directives. Mm. They will only advise. If you, if you have been advised and you are not taking it to read, what will they do? Nothing. So not until when we put into leadership positions, people that understand the intricacies involved in economic growth and development, mm. we keep on being in the state of perpetual recession in Nigeria. Now, he's talked about being in a state of perpetual recession for six years, and it's still going to continue over time. Um, how do we get out of this quagmire in Nigeria? I would like to say that it's not um, a state of recession for six years. It's been a state of recession for 60 years. Mm. <laughs> So it's independent, right? Yes, because part time, we've had issues with purchasing power. If you look at 1980, our budget at that time was $25 billion. If you look at it with respect to Naira, the only difference was the Naira had more value. In 2020, yeah. and going into 2021, if you still calculate our budget in terms of dollars, because we are more of an import-dependent country. You will still see that it's overing around that same $25 billion. 60 million people, or 65 million people in 1980 mm. to 200 million people in 2020. You don't need to do the maths. It can add up. If you were single and you were handing 100,000, and by the time you have wife and four kids. It's not, it's not it's enough at all. You're yeah. still earning 100000 That's the problem of Nigeria. Now, the only thing I've failed to understand is the fact that, you know, we, talked about, we talk about leadership every time. I was joking before we came on here. Leaders will always come and go. Nigeria will remain the same, the same way it is. Put in another person. It will still be the same thing. The problem we have is not the person there, but it's the elitist mindset. I was reading the newspapers yesterday, I can't remember which, and I won't mention the name of the bank. They just declared the, the um, net profit. I think it's in the region of 71 or 91 I, I, billion. I, I have an, uh, uh, so, I can so, understand, I can understand. Uh, yes, so account. when you look at that, no matter what Nigeria has gone through, banks have always been making profit. What does the government do? They don't do anything. When you, even when you don't have money, they borrow. So, so the borrowing is what's keeping us in this level. Apart from the borrowing, because you can borrow for productive. Are we borrowing for production? By and large, you can give it to this government a bit because you can see where we, you can see. But that's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is when the income of the nation dwindles, the government borrows. Now, what everybody does, who pays for the 
borrowing. The masses. Now, the elites as well, political, uh, that's the political leaders. Now, the economic leaders, what do they do? They also share the burden in the way it won't affect them and spread it on the masses. So how can a country... Uh, did you listen to one, somebody last week? <laughs> Let me mention again. How, how can a country be improving in GDP every year? At the same level that we're increasing in GDP, our poverty rate is, in, is increasing. So, you know, we won't get anywhere until we face the... We have a, last week we were still talking about it. Leaders, not in government now, even artists that go around with policemen that should be yeah. protecting you and I. So that's the same structure in Nigeria. The elites, they will come on TV. They will say what they need to say. But the problem is still among the elites. And you see, you see, taking the cue from when he was talking about leadership, there's a kind of a conspiracy among the elites in this country that they don't really want the normal growth to happen because they are profiting from it. So not until when we now get somebody who can commit what I call a uh, 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 class suicide. Somebody like Balerabe Musa tried it. You saw what happened to him. Somebody like, uh, I think Rimi too was about to do things like that. Rimi. Do you understand? But look at what happened today. So not until now we stand up and, and get people with character. Character. I can say yes. I want to. I want to swim against the tide of what is happening in this country. So is that possible? Is that uh, the it, political it is, will? It is. Listen. It is possible. It is just very few people that will do it. Like I said, look. Look at where he took his analogy to. Mm -hmm. All right. Increase in population, but dormant level of production. Do you understand? Yeah. Our, our population has been increasing, but we are not trying to generate. Internally. Inter do you understand? Internal, out of fund, that increase in population. Rather, we were always fighting about profit, I mean, uh, uh, revenue, uh, uh, sharing, revenue sharing. Okay, so we are looking at that, that production. Looking at revenue sharing and taxation, now the president, this year alone, taxes were increased to 7.5%. Uh, recently, there have been a hike in tariffs. Electricity, petroleum, and all of that. Twice, of, it, twice, twice within two within months. Two months. So, all of this have all of this having an effect on the economy. It's taxation, the way because the government has said increasingly that we need to increase taxes you know to, why, to generate revenue. Do you know why? Nobody is ready to think outside the box. Now we're thinking. It's of, not. It's not compulsory. Say, Listen, it's not compulsory that you borrow. It's not compulsory. Well, uh, when you think within, when you think outside the box. Let me give you an instance. Very simple. Look at our 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 our, 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 our petroleum um, refineries. All right. Mm -hmm. Assuming, assuming, we are doing our manuf I mean our refineries here. Why? Our, the, the prices of petroleum products wouldn't be the way it is now. Two. There are other residues that you get when you crack your crude oil. That you can use to kickstart the um, petro uh, 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 petrochemical industry in this country, and you cannot overemphasize the quantum of uh, employment generation that that one will bring. Imagine that happening to this country. You don't know. You don't know the kind of a multiply effect you have on our economy. That is okay. just one of so many cases. Imagine. Imagine our maize. Imagine our yam. Imagine our cassava. That. We possess them to international standard, and then we export them. You can you overemphasize the kind of the quantum of economic multiplier effect it will have on our GDP? All right. Do you so? These are issues that we have not been looking at. Mm. Which right now we should start to 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 lay more emphasis on okay. such. Okay. So write it on that. Now the presidency have right from the beginning has always harped on diversifying the economy. Do we see that? on a steady growth here? I think as a way of questioning the effect of this recession. Something he mentioned the other time, we still been our being of development. Um, diversifying the economy is a vision in the center. Okay. When you restructure 
all everything you're doing. And I've said it a few times. Restructuring doesn't have to tinker with the it structure states. of Nigeria in terms of politics. Geographical, or politics, or, to, or ge geographical um, topography. Restructuring can be devolution of powers and empowerment to the states. It's not a na national vision to, to um, diversify. That's where we're getting it wrong. Mm. He has mentioned people sharing money and not talking about productivity. What are the states doing? Absolutely nothing. They just get the money they share. They put some, some of them that have this egalitarian mindset, they do stuff. So we can see some governors. Now, but your question the other time, there is a signal and there is a solution coming. What's the, the signal? The, the, the elites, they are jittery. They are just hiding under the political class. If you read the speech and address of um, vi former Vice President Abu Akatiko over the weekend, mm -hmm. You understand. Now everybody is saying, let's tax ourselves 15%. Those are luxury items. Let's look at how we not borrow. Now, the hashtag answers protest has given them a shake up. People will start to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And we are beginning to look in what. Mm -hmm. So I believe the solution is coming. Because if the solution does not come, the next thing will be getting answers. So now we have to, or then the, the, the citizens must press up to. What, what is the role of citizens here? Now, if we, you know, you mentioned something that we don't need to borrow. Mm -hmm. I agree. But we need to pay to get to where we're going. If the government does not borrow, give it to private sector, do PPP. You can see what is happening in Lagos, um, sorry, um, MM2, MM2, compared yeah. to MMO. But you pay in MM2. <laughs> MMO is like an orthodox right. to. Um, the new Pentecostal. Mm. I'm sorry to use that an analogy. All right. But every, everybody still serves a purpose. Right. So I believe we can do it, and I still believe in the project of Nigeria. All right, gentlemen, sure. thank you very much for talking to us at this point. Of course, we had public affairs analyst, Jubimi Adebi Bennett, as well as political technocrat, Dr. Daya Kaidi. Thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. I, I still believe in the project Nigeria. We all believe in the project Nigeria. <laughs> thank you very much for talking to us. <laughs>